and that lets you save the look here. True form life. Green look on Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. All right, super excited to be back here on Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being with us and being a part of our True Form Life community on our nationally syndicated Exploring Mind and Body. Whether you're listening as a podcast around the world or on terrestrial radio across the country, it means so much to us for you to tune in each week. And if you're brand new, welcome to the show and thank you for being here as well. Today I'm going to be talking about changing up your workout routine. I think it's so important to change up our workouts and not continue to do the same thing over and over again, which is where we hit that dreaded plateau that nobody wants to talk about. And that that dreaded plateau means that we stop seeing the results we're looking for. Usually means we're going to go fall into a negative snowball effect of not feeling motivated to work out when we don't see the results we don't find inspiration then we kind of slowly stop working out and then of course we see less and less results which is the exact opposite of what we're looking for so i've got all kinds of tips and tricks coming up for you on this show sit back and enjoy we got all that coming up on this is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, I'm excited. I hope you're excited to tune in to hear the show on how to change up your workouts or your workout routine along with the importance of it. Super important. Let me mention real quick here. There's something called muscle recovery, muscle confusion. There's plateaus. What we need to do when it comes to our workouts is we need to avoid muscle memory. (laughs) Now, I know that sounds counterintuitive to a lot of people because in most cases, we want to do things, especially if you look at the sports world, repetition after repetition, so you don't have to think about it. It just becomes muscle memory. That's something similar when it goes to creating healthy habits. Like I often talk about creating morning routines. I think morning routines are so important to our everyday life to set our days up for success. So in this case, you want to have that muscle memory. You want to do things every day. So you want to have the exact same morning routine is that that's what I like to do to set my day up for success in the evening. It's no different. I like to have a more an evening routine similar to my morning routine. So if I'm having tea in the morning, I like to have tea in the evening. I like to read something a bit. In the morning, I read something more businessy, exp- inspiring, for example. In the evening, I might read something a bit more spiritual, if you will. Like, for example, I did a past show on the Four Agreements. So I recently would read that in the evening, and that gives me something to think about. But it doesn't stimulate my brain. That's something I want to av- avoid late in the evening because I got a lot of things going on through the day. I want to slow my mind down along with my body when I get ready to go to sleep. So that's how you bookend your days. This is a bit different when it comes to working out because you don't want your body to go into muscle memory. You actually want it to be muscle confusion. (laughs) So I don't mean to confuse you here, but that's how it goes. So these are two different types of muscle like don't get me wrong when you when i'm talking about muscle memory you want to have the proper form you want to be able to rep the same way your push-ups you should do so many push-ups that you don't i mean i don't mean at one time over time you're doing push-ups and you continually do a number of push-ups so i could tell I mean, i've been training for years now but i can tell if someone's just beginning and they're starting with their first few types of push-ups and someone that's been doing push-ups for years or i could tell when someone's been in the military and they can rep out push-ups like it's their job because in most cases it is. If they're part of the military, they do push-ups all day long. And I can, I can just tell by looking at them. And it's because of the reps. That's entirely different. That's why it's so completely different when it comes to if you're putting in the reps or not. You can tell. Same thing with nutrition. I can tell if someone's following the nutrition plan. You can tell by looking at them. And at the same time, they're telling you that they're following and you know they're not. <laughs> so you're not doing anybody any good by not being truthful in that Oh, I'm not going to talk about the four agreements again, but that goes back to being impeccable with your word and speaking the truth, thinking the truth, living the truth. I think that means so much in life, but 
when it comes to this muscle confusion, we need to change up our workouts. So when the plateau comes, it usually comes when we're doing the same weights, the same reps, the same workouts day in and day out. Now, I'm not saying you don't ever, can't ever repeat the same workout. It's okay to do the same types of workouts, but we need to change them at some point. You could change them every couple of weeks. You could change them monthly. I'm a big fan of changing workouts on a regular basis. Personally, I never do the same workout twice. And that doesn't mean I don't do the same exercises. I'm talking about I change the order, I change the duration. Sometimes I'll start off with push-ups and end with squats. Then another day I'll start with squats and end with push-ups. And it's not that's been ingrained in me because I understand the importance of muscle confusion and continue to see results. So that's been ingrained in me, but also mentally, that's something that's another topic I'm going to talk about here in this show. But mentally for me i need to change up my workouts if i'm going back to do the same workout I'm, i get a little bored i'm like i don't want to do the same thing over and over again but i'm not such a structured person either so you have to follow what's going to give you the most results or what's going to get you working out with the most consistency because that means so much more for me personally i would have a much better i have a much better gauge of success if i know that i can go and do different workouts every day Someone else might need that structure to be like, what is my workout this week? What am I doing? Because I know I need to know exactly what it is. That would give someone else different results. So you have to understand what kind of person you are. So if I can look at, talk about muscle confusion a bit more for a moment. When we have to, so if we are doing the same thing over and over again, our muscles adapt. That's exactly how we grow muscles. Our body is this beautiful, incredible defense mechanism. So when we cut ourselves, we bleed. Then we get blood clots that turn into a scab. That scab later turns into a scar. What that does is prevents anything from damaging that same area. So we can tell that we have scars on our body. Our body heals that area. So if you look at muscles, for example, we put our body into a certain amount of stress. Let's say we're doing a bicep curl. We're doing a bicep curl and your muscle actually grows and gets stronger because of the amount of stress you put on it through bicep curls. For example, this is, we can use any, we can use squats, we can use shoulder presses, doesn't matter what it is, but our body builds back up stronger so it can fight, so it can be that defense mechanism in case you go ahead and put that same amount of stress on your body again. So I hope you're following me here. That's why our muscles get stronger and bigger. And when I talk about bigger, I'm not talking about like huge bodybuilding type of muscles. I can, I'm going to talk about that later on in the show as well, the type of workouts you're doing. A lot of people think if they grab some weights or if they start working out on a regular basis, they're going to get these big giant muscles and they're going to look like a man or they're going to look like a bodybuilder. And it's just not the case. It doesn't work like that. You have to eat a certain way and you have to exercise a certain way for a duration. It's not going to happen after a couple of weeks or a couple of months. It takes a long time to develop these muscles or it depends what you're looking for so long and sleek um fit and toned or big and bulky those are the different types of muscles people are usually looking for or usually after but you have to structure your nutrition and workout around both of those to get those results so if you start going to the gym you're not going to look like a bodybuilder you don't have to worry about that i know and i'm saying this our, our demographic is I know it's mainly women, I know, but we also have a good base of men as well. I do get messages once in a while from men that say, I really enjoy your show. The men seem to enjoy the more of the motivation type of stuff, to be honest with you. But the so for the men out there, I was a hard gainer myself. It took me a lot of time and effort to get muscles. And I, at one point in time in my athletic career, I walked around at almost 220 pounds of muscle. I'm only 5'10, 5'11. And so I was, I was a big guy I, and I certainly didn't need that amount of muscle mass, but I felt like I did at the time. So I know that world. I know what it's like to try to get those muscles and try to gain weight and try to look like a guy on a protein shake. <laughs> I've, been, I've been through, I've been there. I've been through all that. That's not where I am in life now, but I could tell you how to get there. In this case, regardless of what goals you have set for yourself, we have to decide or we have to understand that it takes a very specific workout type of program to get those results. So for me personally, I got to go to goals. Goals are so important. I set goals all the time. And 
we have to consider what it is we want out of our workouts. What is what is it we want out of our life? So, for example, for as a, as a hard gainer, like I like to run. I mentioned the running group that I'm a part of. I have the Transformations Through Running podcast as well that we uh, we produce once a week. So, running is part of my lifestyle. I like to run. I like to get out. I get out once a week for sure. I know that doesn't sound like a lot. Once a week for sure. I go on Sunday runs with the group, and I go on. I usually go on a Friday run as well with the group, and sometimes another one by myself. And so those are my goals. So I run two to three times a week, max. I don't want to run anymore. So for me, I went out running with Dorothy. She's trying to training for a, not at this point in time, but when she was training for her half marathon, she went out and trained almost every day. So I was running with her, didn't really think about my goals at the time. And I started to lose a bunch of weight. And I know that sounds great to a lot of people, but it doesn't to me, I don't want to, I, like, I feel like I'm happy and strong and healthy at a certain weight or a certain body type, if you will. And I mean, it's easy for me to lose weight. I know people hate me for that, <laughs> but that's okay. So if I go out running every day, I'm going to whittle down to much more skinnier than I would prefer to be. So I had to go back and reassess and be like, okay, well, that's not part of my goals. What could get me where I want to be? So when I look at the body structure and how I feel strong and healthy, maybe twice a week is good enough for me. Maybe and three times is max. I don't want to run any more than that. But we have to look at, if you look at the bodybuilder type or those that want to create a bunch of muscle mass, you're probably not, during a gaining stage, you're not going to go and run that often. You're not going to put in a bunch of time to cardio because you want to gain as much, not just muscle mass, but body fat comes along with that as well. And then in your cutting stage, you'll do a bunch of cardio. So you have to decide what it is you want and you have to look at your lifestyle. For me, I like to ride bikes. I like to skateboard. That's a new thing for me. I like to surf. That's something newer for me as well. And you have to understand like if you want to gain a bunch of weight and clang around weights in the gym, for example, and have big bulging muscles, it's going to be really tough for you. You're going to have to eat twice as much as you already do, which is probably more than you'd like to if you're trying to bulk, for example. If you want to get to that level, it's going to be challenging if living that lifestyle, living that lifestyle of being super active and surfing and riding and running because you're burning a lot of you're burning a lot of body fat, burning a lot of weight and muscle, a bit of muscle mass comes with that. And, and me personally, I have to sacrifice that. So those of you that are looking to be lean and toned, for example, you have to look at your lifestyle. If you are sitting on the couch from work, like you get off work and you go to sit on the couch and you pretty much hang out in and around the house till you go to sleep and that's your lifestyle maybe you go for a workout or two like that and and you don't have other activities outside of that consider your lifestyle because we are all about lifestyle at true form and i understand lifestyle because of how i live and how i understand i know exactly what it's like as a professional baseball player i lived and breathed baseball every single day during the off season i trained i trained three times a day and when i wasn't training i was eating because I knew I was burning off tons of calorie, calories and I had to keep my body mass. And one of those training training sessions throughout the day was sprints. I did different types of sprints every day in calisthenics. And then when I wasn't practicing, I was eating and watching baseball on TV and studying the athletes just because I wanted to be better. We, were watch, we would go to games. I would watch games. We would play video baseball video games. It was insane. But that was my lifestyle. And... That be, helped me become a better athlete, a better baseball player, and it helped me move up the ranks. And I'm not saying that you have to do this. Like, you don't have to be obsessed. Like, that was clearly an obsession for me at that time. I, I loved that, and that's all I loved. That's all there was to it. And that's it's, it's challenging. That was a difficult lifestyle, which eventually had me moving on from it to do other things and living a, I would say, sounds crazy to say now, but a more fulfilling life, a more overall holistic life with different things that life has to offer that I had no idea about. I had basically tunnel vision. That's all I knew. That's all I did. And now there's many different things that have been involved in my life that I have come to love and appreciate as well. But what I'm talking to you about lifestyle is that a lot of times people say, well, I want to be thinner or I want to be, I want that beach body or I want to be long and sleek. But then you look at your lifestyle and it doesn't replicate that at all. And I just have to be 100% honest with you. If you're, if you, if that's the body type that you want, we have to look at changing up our workout, not just our workouts, but our lifestyle. So if your lifestyle is a couple workouts a week, that's not going to get you to where you want to be. 
you have to do other things like go and do things that are active. Like you have to be one of those people that, oh, I really like to go for hikes on the weekend once in a while. I like to go for long walks with my dogs after work. I like to ride a bike or like to be active. I like to do other things like your hobbies as well as working out, for example. Those are the things that need to happen. I know that's challenging for a lot of people that are just starting to work out. And they're like, well, I can only fit two workouts a week into my schedule. And that's great. That's a great starting point. We always have to start with healthy habits, create those healthy routines, and then move forward progressively into the lifestyle. But the more things that we do that replicate in our lifestyle that replicate that body type or the person that we want to become, the one that's that that body that makes us feel comfortable and strong and healthy. That's what we need to replicate because those minimal workouts aren't going to do it. And we again, we have to understand maybe you're a person that works out twice a week and has that body type. And when I say body type, I don't mean aesthetically. It's a tough word for me. I don't just mean like visually or what you see in the mirror. I mean like many times we have a we have that inner confidence of how we look and everyone's like that. And it, it doesn't matter. Like it, it could sound like it's, it's just on the surface or, you know, it could be just something like we're thinking of a glamor magazine. That's not what I mean. Like all of us feel secure in our body at some level, depending on how we look, how we feel, our digestion levels, our energy levels. And so what I'm saying here is that when you have your proper body type, for example, when you have your workouts on point, when you're changing up your exercises and your workouts, and you're doing the things that you need to do to feel your best, that's usually centered around some type of of body type. And we see it all the time. People always come to me like, I wanted to lose weight. That's the first thing I hear. And I'm like, we don't do weight loss, but I can dig deeper and figure out why it is you want to lose weight. In most cases, it's confidence. They want to have confidence when they put their clothes on, when they run around with their kids, when they show up at the office. But over the years, no, not any one single person has come to me and said, can you help me increase confidence? Maybe that's a different industry we feel. Maybe that's some like Anthony Robbins self-motivational type of thing. But understand that there's a deeper level there. In most cases, we don't want to lose weight. We want something deeper, and we need to figure out what that is. But so let me get back to muscle memory, muscle confusion to continue to change your workouts up so you have muscle confusion so your body doesn't run into that plateau and continue to or sorry to stop seeing results. Changing up your workouts means you need to change or changing up your results to see results means changing up your workouts on a regular and continual basis. So if you're doing the same thing over and over again, the same type of workouts, we need need to change it up. Now we can, like I said earlier, we can change a few exercises. We can change workouts completely. We can make them longer. We can make them shorter. Or you can get a bit more drastic and do something completely different that you've never done. You can start swimming, for example. Like maybe some, maybe you're working out three or four times a week. You drop that down to twice a week, and now you're swimming once or twice a week. So you still have the same amount of workouts in, and but you're changing your workout up so you can see different results. That's a great way to go after muscle confusion and see those results you're looking for. For me, it's mentally appealing to do something different. That's why I'm always doing something. I just, like for me, at least at the time of this recording. I just got a surfboard. I have a pretty cool story in a past show I talked about. I want to surf, or sorry, I want a skateboard. And I always want, I live in here in the LA area, everyone's skateboarding some or another. It's a very common form of transportation. I think that the, um, the idea of skateboarders being punks and like hanging out, that stigma is not so much in California. I've seen, I've, I've lived in other parts of the world and I've seen it. I've been a part of it. It's not so much here. It's not that bad here in California. Like people actually use it for transportation and they use skateboarding for fun. At any rate, I wanted to try something different. I won the skateboard. I always wanted one since I moved here and I got a chance to use the skate, like use the skateboard and take it down the beach and cruise down the strand, which was a lot of fun for me. And I got to tell you, the first time I took it out, I hardly could walk the next day. Because you have to balance, you need core, you're swinging your leg, so my hip flexor and glute was like, and and I'm only swinging on one leg, so my left foot's on the board, my right leg's swinging, so my right leg is super tight, and my hip flexion, I was like, oh my gosh, I was like, should I be using, should I be swinging both legs, like foot back and forth, but 
almost nobody does that when they ride a skateboard as far as I know. So, but at any rate, so for me, that was changing up activity. I could ride that for an hour and it's tiring. Like I'm exhausted after riding. It's much different than riding a bicycle, for example. So that's the difference of changing things up. And it's mentally stimulating for me. It's like, oh, I want to go learn a new skill. I want to balance on that board. I want to see if I can get there a little bit faster, a little bit slower. And so for you, of course, it doesn't have to be skateboarding. It could be instead of using the elliptical at the gym, you're going to use the bike. Or instead of using the bike, you're going to use the treadmill. Maybe they have different kinds of treadmills. Or maybe instead of going for a walk, you grab some snowshoes and you go snowshoeing or cross-country skiing or whatever it is. I think variety is the zest of life. And it is also <laughs> the zest or the essence of results. We have to continue to change things up and do different things. So we can see different results. And I really like this quote. I say it all the time is that if you want something different out of life, you have to be willing to do something you've never done. That's not verbatim, but I do really enjoy that one. And I, t I say it and repeat it in different ways all the time. This is kind of what this show is about. Uh, this show is about. If you want to do achieve different things in life, like to see different results, you must be doing you must be willing to do something you've never done. And in most cases, people aren't willing to change their workouts. A lot of people to be quite honest with you, aren't willing to work out at all. They say, I want some results. I want to see some difference. So we put them through a program and they say, have you got your workout in? No. Nope. Next week, have you got your scheduled workouts in? Nope. <laughs> and you, I mean, you got to think like some those people, they're not willing to put in the result, the, the work, at least at this point in time, we're hoping that we can get them there. So you offer motivation and you offer information and you share that knowledge and you're there for support. But quite honestly, some people simply aren't willing to put in that work or they're not ready to. So that, so you have to look at that and say, well, then they're not ready to see results. And sometimes this information is, is tough pills to swallow. It really is. Like a lot of times you don't want to hear this. Like, well, if you're, I'm not working out, I still want to see results. Like, well, you're not ready for results because you're not ready to put in the work and the time and effort. Everyone takes time. Like everyone has to put in the work to see results. Nobody just wakes up unless, you, unless you're... 16 and you have a super fast metabolism as sooner or later that's going to catch up but most people that are fit and strong and healthy they have that inner confidence they feel good about their bodies they work out because there's so much value to it and i can't explain or stress it. if you don't know i don't think you can know <laughs> you know you know what i'm saying like i think when you go work out like i feel so inspired and so driven after a workout i do that's why i do my workouts in the morning once in a while i have to do them in the evening and, and then i get a little boost of motivation in the evening i'm like oh i should have worked out in the morning because then i have a bit trouble sleeping if my mind is going crazy and i've got all these things going on and i have that inspiration but it's really hard to share that with someone else that isn't on board or doesn't feel it or doesn't believe it that you're going to like some people like I just don't want to work out like okay we'll do a different type of workout or go for a walk or, or a jog or a swim or skateboarding or surfing or play tennis or pickleball or there's a million things that you could do to find that inner excitement to move your body to get your blood flowing to get your heart pumping to get your lungs moving in and out. And it's really challenging to share that with someone that doesn't know. Like, if you go work out, you'll feel so much better about yourself. If you're struggling with a little bit of anxiety, maybe depression, go out there, set a goal for yourself, accomplish it, and see how much new inspiration you have. See, like, you can actually watch that depression whittle away a little bit. That anxiety tends to dissipate, if you will. But we have to put in that continual time and effort to make that happen, which unfortunately... Is, again, is challenging to portray to other people. Like You can't make them go and work out. I would love to do that. I go show up at someone's house and be like, you're working out today. It's happening. But we have to have that a little bit of internal motivation and inspiration to make that happen. There's no other way about it. There's no other way around it. So I talked about briefly here at the beginning of different types of workouts. So I'm, I'm a big fan of full body movements. So full body movements is like, a push-up, for example. I know a lot of people don't like push-ups. I didn't say burpees. <laughs> I said push-ups. But if you think of a push-up, your whole body is moving. If you look at a bicep curl like I talked before, only your bicep is moving. And I mean, of course, your whole arm is going up and down, but the only targeted muscle group is your bicep. So all you're doing is isolating. That's the difference between full body and isolated movements. If you're working towards bigger biceps for bodybuilding, for example, then you do a stand there and do a bicep curl. That's the only purpose 
for a bicep curl you could do for a full body weight movement for example maybe you do a squat curl press so you're moving your entire body you're getting more out of the exercise and you're making your entire body stronger with each movement now that's not to say if you're doing full body workouts not to say you're not going to do any isolation so for example we like to do abs at the end so that's mainly core we usually do more than just ab like we do we sometimes we mix in glutes we have our thighs in there that's core we have our abs as well we have our sides obliques lower abs upper abs so you can target different areas so sometimes there's an isolated movement in that regard especially when it comes to core but in most cases it's rare to do like a, a tricep extension for example where you're just isolating your tricep if you do dips for example you're moving your whole body up and down so that's the difference between isolated movements for me, the only real reason I can think of isolated movements is if you're trying to get like a bigger muscle group. If you are not trying to get a bigger muscle group or stronger in your chest, for example, you're not going to sit there and do bench press for three hours like I used to do. Trust me, I've been there. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that a lot of people don't realize you don't have to do that to get the results you're looking for. Most of us want long and sleek and strong looking muscles. We don't want to have big bulky muscles. So in that case, we need to change up our workouts and do them differently. You can always change up your workouts and schedule your own types of workouts. You can also design your own programs. There's nothing wrong with that. Personally, I feel like you get more out of it if you went to a professional. Of course, I have a biased opinion because I am a professional and I've been doing it for 10 years. So if you start out and you're brand new and you're trying to put a program together, it might take you four hours and there's going to be issues with that program, probably not well balanced and it's probably not going to be as efficient as it would if you got a professional to do it. Some people can't afford a professional, which is perfectly okay. So you design your own or you go on the line and you find a bunch of free programs. Like we have a free one ourselves. So if you go to trueformlife.com, we have a free 10 day fitness challenge and we design all the workouts for you. We have videos, we have printable PDFs, we have absolutely everything you need to complete those workouts for 10 days and then we show you what it's like to be in our monthly membership group where we do meal planning recipes grocery shopping lists along with at-home workouts and group support so you kind of get the whole package for an amazing price if i do say so myself but that's just an option you can go and find different ones yourself what i'm saying here is that it's a great idea to design your program so once you have the program designed so you can go to a professional get them to do a month for you and then you switch that up yourself. So instead of doing everything, the same thing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you change it up. So now you go you, to, to get that muscle confusion, you take that same workout and you instead of doing that workout on Wednesday, you do it on Monday. So now you're doing Wednesday's workout on Monday, maybe Friday's on Wednesday's and Wednesday's on Friday's. <laughs> How's that for confusing? It's not, I'm not trying to confuse you, of course, but all you do is change up the workout so you can continue, continue to see muscle confusion and change things up in that regard. And that's just one of the ways to ch change things up. Flip your workout from front to back, back to front. That's another way to create muscle confusion. I, I'll, t I'll just mention nutrition briefly here. Obviously, I'm a big nutrition nut, but it's important to change up your nutrition as well to continue to see results. I talked to some lady and I said, what do you have for breakfast? And she says, I have two eggs and one piece of toast. And I said, well, what do you have the other days of the week? And she said, that's what I have. And I said, well, how long have you been having that? 20 years. 20 years you've been having the same breakfast and she's like wow sometimes we go out with friends or sometimes we're traveling but in most cases that's what i have <laughs> i was like oh my gosh and this particular individual was having trouble seeing results and i said well not only do you have to change up your workouts but you have to change up your nutrition as well so you can see different results so remember that our body is a defense mechanism it will build back up stronger to the point where it's at where it can be strong so it doesn't need to continue to adapt we have to change our workouts up. We have to do different things. We have to change up nutrition. We have to change up our cardio. We have to continue to do different things so our body continues to adapt to see the results we're looking for. Now, that's what I have for you today. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that helped. I hope that it gave you some ideas and insights on how you can continue to see results by changing up your workouts. All past shows are going up on exploringmindandbody.com. You can definitely check out past shows there and also on multiple podcasting platforms too. I mentioned trueformlife.com earlier. That's something if you want to reach out to us, please shoot us a message. Let us know how we can help. We have tons of recipes, tons of workouts. We've been doing this for a long time and it's what we do. Lastly, I'll leave you with our social media handles in case you want to follow us along there. We're on there 
on a regular basis. Every single day we're posting, answering questions, asking questions. We're trying to com- communicate with you how we can help and have better relationships with you. Facebook.com slash TrueFormLife and Instagram.com slash DrewTaddy are our two main social media platforms at this time. We'd love for you to follow us along. and We'd love if you sh- shoot us a message and let us know how we're doing with this show. Once again, thank you so much for being here. That's it. That's all I got. I'm out of here. As always, I'm your host, Drew Tadia, in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.